OK, so in our question, we are told the probability distribution of the discrete random variable x is given by this table here. It's worth noting that we have the probability that x is equal to 3 is equal to theta, and the probability x is 5 is equal to 0 0.4 minus theta. Part A wants us to state the range of possible values for theta. Well, this comes from just thinking about actually what values can theta hold, knowing that all probabilities must lie between 0 and 1. They can be equal to 0, they can be equal to 1, but they can't go outside those bounds. So the only information that we can get about the range of values that theta can hold from this information here about x equal to 3 is that theta cannot be less than 0. So we're just going to put 0 less than or equal to theta. From this other range here, what we can determine is a maximum value for theta, because theta can be anything from 0 up to 0 0.4, which would make the probability for 5 equal to 0, but it cannot be anything more than 0 0.4, that would make the probability for 5 equal to a negative number. So theta must lie between 0 and 0 0.4. How do we get our marks in this question? Well, quite simply, we get one statement mark for this range. It must be a range of values defined because we can't just give 0 0.1, 0 0.2 because we could also consider 0 0.11, etc. So this covers all possible values for theta between 0 and 0 0.4. Okay, so part B wants us to state the range of possible values for the expectation of x. So what we're going to do here is we are going to calculate the expectation of x or at least we're going to calculate an expression for it. So what I mean by that is we're going to carry on calculating the expectation for x for this using theta in our calculations. So we're going to do the x value times the probability, so 1 times 0 0.1. We're going to sum it up for all of these, so 2 times 0 0.3 plus 3 times theta plus 4 times 0 0.2 plus 5 times 0.4 minus theta. Okay, so we're just going to calculate the expectation of x as if theta was a normal value. When we work through this, we're going to get 0.1 plus 0.6 plus 3 theta plus 0.8 plus 2 and then minus 5 theta. When we work through this, what we actually get is that the expectation of x is equal to 3.5 minus 2 theta. Now at this point we've answered most of the question, but we must remember we want to find the range of possible values for expectation of x. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in the minimum and maximum value of theta into this expression and define our range. Now, if I put my biggest possible value for theta, that will give me my smallest possible expectation for x. So when I put in 0 0.4, 3.5, take away two lots of 0 0.4, will give me 2.7. So the expectation of x must be greater than or equal to 2.7. And then if I put in zero, the lowest bound for theta into this, 3.5 minus 2 lots of 0 is just 3.5. Okay, so how do we get the marks in this question? Well, one method mark is given for this line here, showing how we calculate the expectation using theta and our probabilities. We are then given an accuracy mark for coming out with this expression here that represents the expectation of x. And then finally, we have given an accuracy mark for indicating the range for expectation of x is between 2.7 and 3.5. So there's your three marks. Okay, now C is worth a lot of marks and can be seen to be a challenging question. So what you have to do on these questions, you just have to think, just take baby steps and try and work through and achieve as much as possible. And hopefully it leads you to completing the entire answer. Okay. We are told given the variance of X is 1.5, determine the value of theta. 
So what we know is the variance of x equals 1.5. Now, I know to calculate the variance of x that what we have to do is we have to do the expectation of x squared minus the expectation squared of x. Now, I've actually got the expectation of x as a expression. So let's see if I can work out the expectation of x squared. Now what I'm hoping to do here is that I can put in this expression for expectation of x and then square it, that I can find a similar expression for the expectation of x squared, and this will set up a whole expression on the right hand side in terms of theta, and variance of x is of course 1.5, so I'll have an equation in theta to solve. So let's just work through this. The expectation of x squared, almost identical to what we did with the expectation of x, except we're going to square the x value, so I get 1 squared times 0 0.1 plus 2 squared times 0 0.3 plus 3 squared times by theta plus 4 squared times 0 0.2 and then plus 5 squared times 0 0.4 minus theta. Okay, so we're just going to work through it, taking our time, making sure we make no silly mistakes, just as we did with the expectation of x. So 1 squared times 0 0.1 is still 0 0.1. Plus 4 times 0 0.3 gives me 1.2. Plus 9 times theta is 9 theta. Plus 16 times 0 0.2 is 3.2 plus 25 times 0 0.4 is 10. And then minus, or 25 times minus theta gives you minus 25 theta. Okay, so what we're looking to do now is just simplify this expression. So we get that the expectation of x squared is equal to 1.3, add it on to 3.2 is 4.5 plus 10, we get 14.5 minus 16 theta. Okay, so we're kind of getting somewhere now. So what I can do is I can now set up an equation. I can put in the variance of x, which is 1.5. That is now equal to the 14.5 minus... 16 theta that I just calculated for the expectation of x squared. Take away the expectation of x, which is 3.5 minus 2 theta, all squared. Now, when you work through this, please make sure you take care that you don't make any silly mistakes. So just coming across the line, using an arrow just to indicate I'm coming across, we get 1.5 is equal to 14.5 minus 16 theta minus we're going to get 3.5 squared so if we calculate 3.5 squared we get 12.25 my uh, we get minus 2 theta times 3.5 theta would give you minus 7 theta we want to do that twice so we're now going to get minus 14 theta and then 2 theta times 2 theta or negative 2 theta times negative 2 theta will give me plus 4 theta squared. Okay, so now we can tidy this up. 1.5 is equal to, if we work through this, 14.5 Take away 12.25 is going to be 2.25. I get minus 16 theta minus minus 14 theta, so I can get minus 2 theta. And then we get minus 4 theta squared. 
Now, we need to rearrange this equation also that it is positive 4 theta squared. So if I add the 4 theta squared, so if I take everything across the other side from this side, so I'm going to add the 4 theta squared, so I get 4 theta squared. Add the 2 theta, so I get plus 2 theta. And then this time, actually, I'm going to take away the 2.25 here. So actually, I get minus 0.75. This is going to be equal to 0. Now, this is obviously taking a long time. This is why you got 8 marks. But actually, most of the hard work's done here at this point. I look at this, and straight away, I think think about whether I can factorise it. I can't factorise it with a fraction. So what I'm going to just quickly do is I'm going to see what happens if I times the whole equation by 4 so that I can get rid of this 3 quarters. I know that 3 quarters has got a denominator of 4. So what I'm going to get is 16 theta squared plus 8 theta minus 3 equals to 0. So... 16 times minus 3 gives me minus 48. I'm looking for factors of 48, one positive, one negative, that have a difference of 8. So I'm looking there at 12 theta and 4 theta. So coming across, I'm going to do 16 theta squared. We want plus 12 theta minus 4 theta, minus 3 equal to 0. Start to factorise. I can take 4 theta out of the first pair of terms, so I get 4 theta times 4 theta plus 3, and then minus 1, because if I take that minus 1 out, it'll give me 4 theta plus 3 for that second bracket. That's all equal to zero. And then again, just come across the line to making sure I'm using the arrows, not equal signs. So I've got this factorizes to give me four theta plus three. That's the common factor I'm taking that bracket outside. And then that leaves this other bracket, which is four theta minus one equal to zero. So from this, I have two possible solutions, theta can be equal to minus 3 over 4, or theta can be equal to 1 quarter. Since theta represents a probability, theta has got to be, therefore, theta has got to be equal to a quarter, since it's a probability, so we know it's got to be positive, but also just relating back to the beginning of the question, we know that theta's got to lie between 0 and 0.4, more importantly. Okay, so you could potentially have got a positive answer here, and there's one that lies between 0 and 1, you'd ha still have to determine between the two solutions. Okay, so quite a long solution there. Let's have a look back and see how we got the marks. Okay, so first thing is, if you've done this line here, trying to work out the expectation of x squared, you can have a mark method mark and an accuracy mark if the line matches up to this here. Okay, so then we should have a method mark if you have done the following line, which is actually you're going to get uh, one method mark for putting the equation Together that the variance is equal to the expression e of x squared, so this bit here really, but in terms of the function, you're then going to get an accuracy mark for getting this line here, where 1.5 is equal to 2.25 minus 2 theta minus 4 theta squared. So that's actually really for getting this part here. And then you are going to get an accuracy mark for rearranging and getting that the actual quadratic equation is equal to this expression 
in between the grade brackets here. Once you've got to that expression, you get one method mark for managing to factorize that expression successfully, and then you get your final accuracy mark for stating correctly which one of theta is your solution. You can of course use the formula if you don't fancy trying to deal with this quadratic here and looking to see whether it's factorized. Okay, I hope all that made sense and that you understood it.